Hello team and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the topic of pivot tables in Excel. A pivot table is a powerful data summarization and analysis tool that allows you to organize and manipulate large amounts of data quickly. This enables you to extract meaningful insights and make sense of complex data sets. This is a large topic. But today's introduction will help get you started as we cover topics including how to start your pivot table and explaining the different sections. We will also talk about creating different pivot table views, calculated fields, analysis, sorting, and filtering. Timestamps are below if you'd like to skip to a different section. Let's get started. To create our pivot table, I have here a spreadsheet for a candy distributor that distributes to different candy stores within four different states. On the spreadsheet, I have the items that are sold. Overall cost is included that may include a calculation of manufacturing, shipping, or other factors, and overall revenue for the sale for each store. Before we continue, let's turn this data into an Excel table. The quick way to do this is selecting Control T on the keyboard, and then you can click OK. The reason we want to create a table is so that if data is added to our spreadsheet, the pivot table range will include the newly added data. To finalize our spreadsheet, we want to make sure we have headers for each of the columns and that they are descriptive of the data contained within each column. Now, in order to add in our pivot table, go to the Insert tab at the top and select Pivot Table. A menu will then appear with some options and the first option you can select from is a range for the pivot table. Because from our data we created a table using Control T, any data we add to the bottom of the spreadsheet will be automatically added to the pivot table range. And you'll see a demonstration of that near the end of the video. So we can move on to the next section. Now Excel is asking us whether or not you want your pivot table to be created on a new tab or in an existing worksheet. To keep things simple today, we'll leave these options as is and click OK. A new tab has been started on my Excel spreadsheet with the pivot table located on the left. Clicking within the pivot table opens up the pivot table field section on the right hand side of your screen. This is the section we use to create and modify our pivot table view. In the top section of the pivot table fields, you will see all of our column headers from our previous spreadsheet. This is why it's important to have descriptive column headers within your data. We use these columns to drag and drop into one of the four sections below. Dragging one of the columns into the rows box will create a unique list of rows for each value within that respective column from my data. So if I click and drag items sold into rows, I now have a unique list of all items I distribute. Dragging an item into the values box helps you with calculations. For example, if I want a quick answer for how many stores purchased each product, I can click and drag candy store name into the values box. And now I can see a unique count of how many stores buy each product. Let's click and drag store location into the columns box. Now the pivot table is displaying to me a quick breakdown of the amount of stores that buy each product across the different locations and a grand total displays off to the very right. If you don't want to see the grand total, you can right click this field and select remove grand total. Finally, the filters box allows you to filter your pivot table by your chosen value. If for example, I take the store location from columns and click and drag this into filters, I now have a filter drop down at the top of my pivot table where I can select the state or location I'd like to see. You can also select the checkbox below to include multiple items within your filter. So now if I change this to only display California and click OK, my pivot table updates. Now that we understand a bit more about each section we can add fields to, let's talk about different views to help us analyze our data. To start with a fresh pivot table view, let me remove all the different fields that I have in the boxes below. So I'll remove store location by clicking and dragging it away. I'll do the same with rows and the same with the count of the store names. Now let's try to determine how many items each store purchased. To begin, I'll drag and drop candy store name into the rows box and then input items sold into the values box. 
Now I'm able to see a count of how many items each store purchased. Let's dive a little bit deeper by adding store location to the rows box underneath candy store name. Now I'm able to see a breakdown of each store location and the count of items sold for each location of the store. As you can see, the row header displays the total for all locations of each store. In the rows box, I'm also able to drag store location above candy store name to change my view. Now I see a breakdown of all the stores within each location and how many items were purchased by those stores. When you have multiple items located within the rows box, you also have the ability to expand or collapse these fields. So for example, if I didn't want to see the breakdown of Arizona, I could click this icon, but the count of items sold as a total will still display. Up on the pivot table analyze tab up at the top, I can click into one of the subgroups and select collapse field to collapse all of the locations at one time. Then I can click expand field above to re-expand them all. I could also quickly change this view by clicking and dragging store location from the rows box to columns. This changes the view so that store locations are columns across the top of my pivot table, but I'm still able to see the count of items sold for each store. Now let's use the pivot table to create a column for profit made at each store. Notice this wasn't data that was on my original spreadsheet, so we'll add a calculated field to display this information. To begin, I'll enter the candy store name again into the rows box, and then enter overall cost and sales revenue into values. These aren't currently displaying as currency, so I can highlight all of the fields and use the keyboard combination control shift plus the dollar sign to display them as currency. Another way to perform the same function would be to right click the fields and select number format. You have a bunch of different options here, but we're working with currency, so if you select that option, you're given some additional capability here for how to format the data. For example, I could remove the number of decimal places, but for now, I'll leave it as is and click OK. Now to add the calculated field. Clicking inside the pivot table, we'll head up to the pivot table analyze tab and select fields, items, and sets. Then select calculated field. We'll title this new column profit, and then the formula for profit we'll enter is sales revenue, so double click there, enter a minus sign, and then double click overall cost, and click OK. Excel automatically adds the new column to the pivot table, and now I can see the profit made for each individual store. Excel will even display occurrences of a negative value or a loss in this case in red font with parentheses so it can be more easily interpreted. Now that I can see my profit margin for each store, let's look at different ways to analyze this data. Along with the currency amount for profit, let's add a second column showing the percent of profit for each store location. In order to do this, we can click and drag profit into the values box a second time, creating a duplicate on the pivot table. Then if I right click inside the new column, I can hover over show values as, and this displays a variety of different options. But for what I want to accomplish, I'll select percent of grand total. I can now see both my profit numbers in terms of dollar amount, but also percentage of the overall total. And we should change the column header to instead say percent of profit so that the label is more accurate. This is a helpful view, but what if I wanted to see this same breakdown by location instead of by candy store name? What I could do is click and drag location into the rows box and then remove candy store name from rows. Now I can see across the four different locations where my buyers are located, the sum of profit and the percentage as well. I could also do the same thing for items sold if I wanted to see where I make the most profit there. Move items sold into rows, remove store location, and now I can see where my highest profit comes from in terms of the candy that we manufacture. Now let's talk about sorting your data within the pivot table. First, I wanna start off by sorting my data by profit, largest to smallest. You can right click the column you wanna sort, hover over the sort option and select largest to smallest and your data is sorted. Additionally, when you have more than one field located in the rows box, you can click the drop-down arrow for row labels 
and select the field you want to sort by. So if I want to sort by store location alphabetically, I can click that item and select sort A to Z. And now each subgroup, which is the store location in this case, underneath the item that I sell is sorted alphabetically. In pivot tables, there are a lot of different ways to filter your data. One way is simply opening up the row labels dropdown and I could select from here which items I wanted to filter by. So for example, if I selected only chocolate, click OK, the pivot table will update. If I undo that action using Control Z, I could also add a separate filter dropdown to the pivot table by dragging items sold from rows into filters. Now I can open up this dropdown located here and select the item that I want to filter by. Let's place items sold back underneath store location for rows and look at filtering using slicer buttons. To add a slicer button, make sure you're on the Pivot Table Analyze tab and select Insert Slicer. I'll insert a slicer for items sold by clicking that checkbox and clicking OK. Now notice that my item sold is still located within the rows field, but I also have a slicer filter for it as well. So if I click one of the options, I'll start with gummies. The pivot table updates to show only gummy sales for each of the locations. I'll clear this filter. You can even add slicer buttons for items that aren't currently on the pivot table. I'll click insert slicer again. We'll add one for candy store name, click OK. And now you'll see even though the candy store names aren't within my pivot table, I can still use this option to filter by them. For example, if I select sweets and more, my pivot table updates and the remaining slicer buttons will gray out any items that don't apply to that store. To add a chart that represents your pivot table, click anywhere inside the table, go to the insert tab at the top, and from the charts menu select the chart you want to add. I'll use this menu to add a column chart. This chart is linked to the data within your pivot table. So for example, if I drag sum of profit out of values, you'll notice the chart automatically updates. Filters work for the chart as well. So if I click the slicer button for Taffy, you'll notice the column chart updates to reflect my selection. Finally, let's talk about how to refresh data within our pivot table. This brings us back to our first topic of our source data and ensuring that is formatted as a table so it can be dynamically updated. I've updated the pivot table view to display only the candy store name, the sum of overall cost and revenue. Heading back to the source data, I'll enter a new candy store name. I'll also enter the location, the product sold, overall cost and revenue. Now heading back to my pivot table, you'll notice the new candy store name isn't yet located here. What you have to do is go to pivot table analyze up at the top and click refresh. Now the new candy store has appeared. As you can see team, pivot tables give you a ton of options and flexibility to review and analyze your data quickly to find the answers you need. I hope you found these tips helpful. Please like and subscribe to the video, leave comments about additional tips you'd like to see covered, and ring that notification bell for future videos.